What's going on, people? It's Thursday. You know what it is. Time to smoke. It's over. How y'all doing out there? On all the platforms, I want to say, first of all, thank you for a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful 2024 so far when you come to my podcasting. And um, it was crazy because I did a lot of recording on Monday, so. Y'all hearing this the same week, you know, and everything. So, like I said, welcome to Smoke is over. So, you know what this is. This is the Smokers Lounge. You know who I am. I'm Kevin Ross of a champ, a.k.a. the porn rap star. Find all my links with one link, allmylinks.com backslash porn rap star. This wonderful podcast is brought to you by four sponsors, rossismagazine.com, bushrocker.com, Kinky Candle Company and the Queen of Law herself, Mitchell um, Ferrari. You can find me on Fully Swap Radio, Full Swap Radio. I always just say that. Full Swap Radio dot com in the mornings, six a.m. Pacific time, seven a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I just want to give y'all that time. You can also catch me on SkyWaveTV dot com. As well as the BGPLLC app. So, um, belated Father's Day to all the fathers out there and to my listeners and everything. And um, I know I have a lot of men that listen to my shit. So, what's up, fellas? Um, I'm not a red pill guy. So, if you're looking for red pill, no, I'm the blue pill. <laughs> I don't want to stay in the matrix. I want to get out. Yeah. Father's Day was, was was chill, relaxed, I enjoyed it. I did some podcasting. Um, I got a lot of great interviews coming <clears throat> to you for Bonus Smoke Friday um, and the premium smoke room is becoming more lit. More ladies are looking to come on. Um, I got episodes dropping, also some new stuff for the VIP smoke room. And I just recorded today, which will be dropped with with record with recording the day of recording this. Um, this weekend, I'll be dropping the third and final installment of the Porn Killer series, Porn Star Killer series for STO Dark Podcast. And um, I don't know, I'm, STO Dark is going to be more of a deep dive when it comes to the porn industry. I might do a deep dive talking about the testing. Um, about the AVN Awards, about different different aspects of the business. You know, uh, I reached out to a lawyer that does, an attorney that does porn business, and um, no, not he's in the business and he shoots scenes. No, he actually has a legal side of the film. I would love to have someone like that come on the show. Cause I want to show different aspects of the business. Um, not just the filming and, and the talent and the producers, but the, the, the shit that you don't hear about and see. You know, so hopefully <clears throat> as the year as this year, next year, as my podcast grow that I can get some of these people on here. And maybe even get some people outside of the adult film industry. You know? But just been um just been grinding. It's been been a lot. You know, uh, I got to remember still to promote my little dope film shit from my past. And recently had an opportunity to come out of retirement, decided not to. And I tell people, when you do this business and you have to get in front of that camera, it does take mental prep. It does take physical prep. It takes a lot to do it. And, and when we say that to people, I know people probably listen and be like, Really? But no. Nah. Because you got to separate something that you do for personal. Separate those emotions so you can do a business transaction. Because when we do content trade, the way we're getting paid for a scene is a business transaction. When I do content trade, the business is is she needs a male talent that got, that got some shit going. I need a female talent that got some shit going. We shoot together and we both share the content. It's a transaction. If I'm paying her for a scene, I'm paying her money, if 
for her to do this shoot. This is a transaction. So it's business. A lot of y'all fuck for personal. You have feelings behind it. You you fall in love with the pussy or the dick. I mean, don't get it twisted. It, it happens on set. Sometimes. And when it comes to content trade, the motherfucker don't want to admit it, but a lot of it based off of, yeah, I want to fuck that person. Yeah, she don't watch him get his, he, the way he strokes, the way he eat the pussy, the, the, and how pretty his dick is, or what have you. So, it's a lot to do with personal. It's, and it's hard to separate personal from business when it's sex. See? Because also, you know, you're walking on that set, you're guaranteed it, at least 90% of the time to get a good fuck. Yeah, granted, you're going to be in front of the camera. Especially if it's content trade. Because you have more of a choice of who you work with. So, so for me, to get, I have to get back into that mode. I have to go get tested. I have to go do this. I have to go do that. And that's a lot. Because on my days off, I don't feel like getting up to go to the health department or TTS web to go get pricked and prod and swab. And then something happened to the test don't, excuse me, the shoot don't happen or some bullshit. But not only that, it's just, man, I work a nine to five too. And I've been retired for five years. The fuck? So, and two, for me, they have to come out of time. It have to feel right. It have to make sense. It is not hard. It's certain things that I look for when it comes to connecting with a lady or what have you. You know, period. Because to be honest with you, I mean, it. I'm not trying. If I did come out, I wouldn't want to go full blown corn. I wouldn't want to be in the industry that strong or trying to go hard to get AVN. Might be one or two girls that I shoot with and shit we know each other. We might be fucking off camera. That's that's pretty much the gist of it. Or I'm dating somebody. Not really trying to do the full blown shit. Did that for 15 years. I love podcasts. I love doing this shit. I love talking to you people. I love hearing y'all hear me talking. Being a part of your day, a part of your week. A part of your life. So. So. Kanye has been back in the news. He's actually been now attached to Puff Daddy and super sexual assault and everything. And a lot of people have been citing his porn addiction. And y'all know how I feel about porn and sex addiction to a certain extent. I, it, not to offend anybody, but it like I said, certain things, if that's if that's the case, which I'll get to that in a minute, then everything's an addiction. And we all need help. But in the case of Kanye, I think when it comes to his situation, it ain't a point of addiction. It's 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 a more deeper and darker issue. Because it like this, and I said this, and I, always, I, I jokingly said it. If you allow, you so horny that I'm getting one of which it's not a porn addiction; it's a form of anxiety. Because now as I team with these people, go look at porn when they go jerk off, whatever it is. Is because they're having an anxiety, high anxiety moment, and that will calm them down. I remember Wheezy from Horrible Decision said, sometimes before she records, she masturbates. Why? I mean, I would think you would record, you would masturbate after for the shit y'all talk about, but it's because it's a nervousness there, there's anxiety there. Some of your favorite, even with porn stars, porn stars, it, they're great when it comes to fucking on camera, but when it comes to talking or being in public, they're nervous as fuck. So to me, I think what happens is where a lot of these these cats, they become that is their comfort. 
the comfort food. No different than when you people go online and you post shit and you for likes and 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 retweets to feel better. You know, the, the, the bad people they say eating is an addiction, food is an addiction. It, yeah, it's a nervousness that happens, anxiety. But see, with like I said, with Kanye, it's darker than that. You see, Kanye. I guess the best way I can put it is this, because we have Kanye and the Puff Daddy, is that these guys have a low look, look, respect, admiration for women. And the reason why, because the way that they move, the way that they Look, they treat women in the whole nine. Now, understand this. I've been in the music industry. I know what happened in them studios. They be smoking. They be drinking. Women be up in there. There be some fucking going on. Yeah. And understand that a lot of girls walk in. They're looking to fuck some of these guys. But not every chick is looking to fuck. She might want to be in there because now I'm honest. She wants to be in there because... This might be an opportunity for her to advance her career. The fact that this lady described them trying to undress her, and she gave them no clues or cues. The fact that anyone would drug someone, this ain't got shit to do with a fucking porn addiction. This is a more deeper, darker, sinister mental. More fucked up mentality. See, even when I think back and look, people, maybe we overlooked a lot of shit when it came to Kanye. But my thing is, it's not about Kanye, it's about people discussing this porn addiction. It is a, in my opinion, an overlay, a distraction from the real problem that a lot of people have mental issues in this world and we didn't know what the fuck it was until this era. So they use porn addiction, they use sex addiction as an excuse to, to, to get to the deeper root of what their problem is. It's no different than when a person Smokes a cigarette. You, you you smoke a cigarette after sex, what to come down off of? You smoke a cigarette when you drink. You smoke. You, you get what I'm coming from. It's a part of some type of it, not. It, I'm not gonna say mental illness because not everybody mental ill. It's anxiety there. It's and that I say they place into. A lot of things. Now, it could have been that none of this was in place back in the day because we didn't know about it. We, did, we didn't have diagnosis, science, none got better. Or it could have been that science kind of made it. It's kind of like the, the, the Matrix in the movie when the Oracle told Neo about the base and he looked back and knocked the base over. Was alcoholism a, a a effect of depression and 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 anxiety? Is it also because this man has a, a sexual needs and wants that his wife may not understand, and he escapes through the porn? See, everybody want to look at the surface, but not the root. Because you can see a tree, and it looks perfect, but the roots are fucked up, and then you know the tree falls over. You see, I think we, we try to oversimplify things instead of simplify things. We believe what we want to believe. See, just like I've been listening to this, you know, Anunnaki stuff, let me make this clear. I'm, I've never been the most religious guy on this planet. 
Do I believe in God? Yes. I believe in Jesus, the Son of God. Yeah. But what's in the book, King James Version of the Bible, I'm not going to take but with a grain of salt. Because to me, if there's tablets on this planet that predate that, and a lot of stories are similar to that, but then why would I doubt that my ape, the ancients were crazy or was making up shit? It's logic. I don't think people use logic no more. They don't use logic in politics. They don't use logic in life. And let me give you the logic what I mean. If you're back in the day and you're ancient, an ancient, you don't know what a rocket is. You don't know what a spaceship is. You don't know what a space suit is. You don't know what a ray gun is. Yeah, if they saw a car, they wouldn't know what a car is. But when they look up, they see something that's flying like a bird. So what they say? Bird. Rib of bronze. If you actually go inside of any tank or ship or what have you, you see something that looks like rib. They describe what they only knew to describe it as. And it's and it's not that I don't believe the stories of the Bible. No, I believe that the names were changed to fit the people who the Bible was written about. See, the thing about it is, is that, I said this before, we trust nothing but believe anything. And I'm not knocking anyone's religion or what have you, because trust me, the teaching of Christ is love. I do not believe that the most greatest of beings, the being that is omni, omni, a being that created this world, created the universe, created human beings, created so many different races probably in this universe and other universes that he really gave a shit about what someone thought about him in the next town or or, or certain things. I mean, hell, at the beginning of the Genesis, didn't he just say that we're going to make Adam in our image? To me, I think it's not I think we, when religion was lost, is the message was lost. Because man, being as selfish as they are, they wanted to make the message suit their purpose. The message is the message. But I digress. The reason why I bring all this up is that we don't look deeper. We don't, we always look at the surface but never go below it. We never find out why is it right, why is it like this? See, everyone has something to say about Ebony K, about her having a baby due in, in, in vitro. I hope I said that right. Well, I guess she figured. Let's look at it. She ain't got to worry about baby daddy. She ain't got to worry about child support. Who's she going to charge child support on herself? But more importantly, do a child need two parents? Yeah. But here's the kicker with this. Any man that she date moving forward is automatically a stepdad. He has no biological connection to the child. So that means he really has to fall in love with the child and the mother. Plus, the other question is, well, playing devil's advocate, what if the child asks who his father is? And a yearning to want to know who the father is. Now, granted, she probably going to know thanks to social media because it, it was all on TV. And, and I sit there and listen to a lot of things that Ebony K says and does. But do I think it's a disservice that 
she didn't have a child with a guy and got married and all that. Not really. Because just because you're a father doesn't mean you're a dad. Step dad might be better than the biological father in some cases. What the child needs is a male figure in his life. Because, see, what women don't realize is that you can teach a man to be a man through the woman's eye. You can teach a woman how to be a woman. But a man can teach a woman this is what a man expects of a woman. And he can teach his son what this is what is expected of a man. From the respecting of a woman. From living as a man and, and, and all that stuff. Because a lot of men get... Why do you think a lot of the boys look at gang members and pimps? Because they're father figures and they, 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 they're men. That's why I said when it comes to porn, dudes can sit here and talk to a female all day. What you need to talk to is a guy. Because we don't make the money the same way the women do. We got to move differently. I came from a two-parent household. You know, pretty my dad ain't gonna bring he was he was there, but not there at the same time in many ways. He always was working and hustling. But he was around. And I had my granddad, I had my uncles. So she don't need necessarily need a biological man, biological father to be a father to that to her child. So I get what men gonna say. Ha 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 ha. See, you couldn't find a dude that was gonna impregnate you in this, that, and third. Well, the question did she even want anyone? Did she even need one? Because you wanna be honest, <laughs> deep down inside, she probably wants to be married. Deep down inside, she wants to be loved. Deep, she wants to have something laid beside her. But also she knows that her age, I dare say maybe a little bit of her attitude and her standards, it prevent, will prevent her from being able to find that guy. Now, here's the funny part. Be funny that she finds the love of her life after she done gave birth to this baby. And she ended up having a second child. Shit like that happens. And then I already know O'Shea Jackson, my man, shot out to him. He probably gonna do a video to talk about it. <laughs> See, she just waited. <laughs> but no, what people gotta realize, women, mind state, and as well as men, we change with age. Your thought process in using 20, your 20s is not the same in their 40s. You know how many chicks I talked to on this podcast, they got have a long-term relationship or marriage, and they become complete freaks. Because it, they change. They develop different tastes. How many couples I done talked to that have it? It towards it right now, they don't even have sex anymore, but the wife gets her jollies off with the BBC and he listens. I had couples sit here and say, husband say, yo, I'd love to see what another dude. The key to any relationship or marriage is how you adjust to the changes that your mate goes through and vice versa. That never changed. Never had it, never will. See, you gotta, you gotta think for a minute. I'm trying to see where I'm going with this. I'm sorry, I got stuck. <laughs> I, had, I had a mind fart. I had a brain fart, ladies and gentlemen. I had a brain fart. There you go. All right. Now the point I'm trying to get to is, is that once again we. We look at the surface, and we don't go underneath it. We don't really dig to what the issue is, the problem is. 
Because you can't come up with a solution if you don't know what the problem is. See, I'm going to tell you what's funny. What was so crazy is y'all need to go check out. It, it drops tomorrow night. Me and and in the premium smoke room, me and Big Joy, we actually discussed politics. I was proud of the motherfucker. I was like, yeah, this, okay, 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 okay. We podcast. And politics the same way. You see, my biggest fear is the only reason if Trump wins is because of popularity, not because of politics. Like I told her, I'm about the policy. I don't care about popularity. It ain't, I don't care for Biden nor Trump, but I like Biden's policies a little bit more. Because it seemed like to me, I truly believe he's not going to win, but it seemed like to me, it's like, the more bullshit he do, the more motherfuckers love this dude. Which proves, it shows my this society once again, we're becoming lazier and more violent and now more dumber. Idiocracy, one of my favorite movies. Y'all need to go check it out. Where this dude who was considered the dumbest person in, in, in our time went to the future and became the smartest because it was that dumb. They were trying to grow crops with energy drinks. Smoke that over. Terry Crews was the president in the movie. So, the, the point I'm trying to make is, is that for anyone that would even look at him as a presidential candidate, a guy who has never been a politician, a guy who only been a celebrity, And the fact that he runs a whole party speaks volumes. And what's so funny is that both of these two men are five years apart in age. And we're questioning Biden's intelligence and his cognitive skill for his age. And Trump is... Practically sounded like a lunatic, but I digress. But once again, people are looking at the surface. Because here's the funny part. Trump has not said nothing about policy this whole time. I don't know what the hell his policy is, if he has one. But y'all love the shit show so much. That's what y'all want. Y'all, y'all want it to be back to where we see his ass every single fucking day press conference, and he him do his little revenge tour and all that. So I'm curious to see how this going to go. I'm still predicting that Republicans going to have a sad day in the election. Because they done so much dumb shit, they don't realize how much it's going to hurt them during the election. So. But it just seems, to me, I, I've been these celebrities Politicians, people in power ain't even going front. Some of you motherfuckers just sick. It's, it's disgusting. To say the least. Um, and disappointing. <laughs> but I digress. So, well, trying to think what happened this week at the day of recording. Uh, I talk about Kanye. Oh, yeah. Notice a lot of old rappers. L. Cool J drop. And, um, I am, yeah, not great. Um, I, they will not get replayed again. I love L. Cool J, but I, I, I don't know. It's, I know it's a lot because I straight up it, me being on YouTube I saw a lot of music videos I seen Ghostface I seen Method Man I seen videos with with Snoop and the Dog Pound and Lady Rage and I noticed 
these videos don't mean shit no more. The thing, the vehicle that used to push and and make made the difference whether you go platinum or diamond or gold is not even a meaningful vehicle anymore. I mean, actually, you want to be truthful about it. I think that we care more about what they're doing on social media than the music itself and the music video. Because the reason why I say that because when a new music video drop, we 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 used to see it. Then we saw the song. Now it's yeah, the new song drop. Just so happen when you look it up, there's a music video. And to me, I think that kind of hurt the hip hop business. That kind of hurt hip hop itself because the visual is is a big part of it. But the thing is, they don't even promote their visual. Right now, it's about TikTok. How many people can you get to do your shit as a challenge on TikTok? We care about if this rapper is fucking somebody. I mean, the proof is in the pudding in the in the rap beat with Kendrick and 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 Drake. No one talked about the bars. The only thing they talked about was the dirt that was spit within the bars. See, people wonder why music is the same because people don't care about the music. They care more about the artist and what the artist is doing outside of music. They write music ain't sell. It's been time where when somebody dropped, we ran to the store now and you spent money. Now we get it for free. And when you get it for free, you kind of take it for granted. The music video sometimes made you go cop the album. Now, there ain't no copy of the album. You just stream it. Put it on your playlist. It's little things that made artists make money back in the day and record labels that made money that they don't do now, and now you see they making less money. Now, there were no 360 deals back then. Now there's 360 deals. Now people saying we need to put in the it, it, streaming. We got to it, think about it. it. If a stream was a sale, they'll make more money. Now, you got to stream a certain amount. Just to get four thousand dollars, that's a million. People used to physically go get movie DVDs and go to the rental spot. This, you know, what I'm saying. I mean, granted, the streaming services helped out the independent a whole lot, but who's buying the actual movies? Who's renting it? They probably wait until it gets on Tubi. Even though I could buy it or down or, or rent it on Prime, she's gonna be on Tubi next week. See, sometimes progress can make you regress. Because even when I think about the business of porn and how much money that, that, that was being made before the OnlyFans came around, the saturation and all that. Perfect example. Rappers made more money when it was less of them. Then SoundCloud came. See, I think people don't really, really, really do a deep dive to what happened to hip hop, what happened to porn, what happened to movies. They just look at the surface. 
So look, I done held y'all up here. And I got a busy, busy day for a Monday. Then I go back to work. So you know how we do. Two ways you can get some extra content from STO, the Smokers Lounge. First way is on Loyal Fans, the Premium Smoke Room. That's right, people. Five, premium podcast for you to enjoy. Three, premium and sexy hostesses for you to fall in love with. And some of the shows, not all of them, it gets more candid, gets more provocative, it gets more wilder, gets more predictable. Tits come out, dildos might pop out, you don't know unless you subscribe. And like I said, you can see me in action in the video store. Enjoy. And everything. And I got some new stuff hitting the Premium Smoke Podcast. And also every week we got new episodes of the Uplift. So there you go. Now the second way you can get some exclusive content is strictly for my people on Spotify. Savage Smoke. These episodes I record is with the men of the industry. As we discuss the business through the eyes of a male porn star producer what have you. We talk about the ladies, we talk about the set, we talk about the shoots, we talk about the sex, we talk about men's sexuality, we talk about it all, we don't hold back, and we bring you that good smoke. Plus, you have over 392 other episodes, ranging from limited podcast series that I did, as well as old premium smoke podcast episodes that is not on loyal fans so you have a lot to binge watch after you listen after you check out the savage smoke you feel what i'm saying so two ways for you to get it premium smoke room on loyal fans and on spotify savage smoke so with that being said you know we end these things all day every day life is a learning experience what's the point of the experience if you haven't learned anything smoke this over